Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at some new gallium nitride charges by Xyron. We're looking at not one, not two, but four new charges. Let's take a look. So while I'm unboxing all these charges, let's talk about GAN charges uh, or gallium nitride charges a little bit. So these charges usually tend to be a lot more compact. Uh, they do feel a bit heavy uh, and they do feel a bit hotter when you use it. So the idea behind gallium nitride is that it kind of replaces silicon uh, in that it can operate at higher temperatures, which means they can kind of make these charges smaller and more compact, yet still deliver uh, enough power uh, to power your devices. Also, full disclosure, I was sent these charges to review. Uh, I wasn't paid for the review at all. Uh, I will be returning them once the review is over. All right, so everything's out of the box. So on the left here is the smallest charger that Xyron has. It is the 30 watt uh, Xyron charger. They don't have a fancy name for it. It's just PD plus QC. Uh, it comes in this box right here. It is maximum 30 watts. So if you're looking at, you know, charging your phone, you know, phones don't come with chargers anymore because Apple, uh, then yeah, this would be pretty good. It's about the same size as, a, as an iPhone charger, but the bonus is this can also charge your iPad at basically full speed. Uh, it comes with two ports, so you could put a more high power device on the USB-C port down the bottom. Uh, and the lower power device on the USB-A port. Uh, it has a charging LED up here as well. So as soon as you plug it in, uh, it goes blue to indicate that there is power. Um, there is a, some specs on the side here. It tells you basically the maximum output is 30 watts. That gets the combined output. So if you use both at the same time, uh, you won't get 30 from both, but the combined output from the USB-A port and the USB-C port should equal um, the maximum of 30 watts. Moving to the next one is the 65 watt. Uh, they have a fancy name for this one. This one is called the Power Stone 65. So this is the 65 watt charger. Uh, it's about double the size of the smaller one. Um, you know, think of it as 230 watts. Uh, it, it is feeling, it is starting to feel a bit heavier already. Now this one has three ports on the back, so you can charge up to three devices, which is pretty good. And again, it's combined wattage is 65 watts. So you're not gonna get 65 out of um, each one individually, it's just combined. So again, uh, you can have a lower power device on the USB-A and then a more powerful device on the upper ones. So at a 65 watt charger, you could get away with charging a, a smaller size laptop. So this, you know, I guess this charger here is about the size of, of you know, standard phone charger, and it's enough to power a, a small, you know, low-powered laptop, which is which is pretty good. Uh, okay, moving right on to the next one. This one here is the 90 watt. It's called the PowerPod Pro. So as you go up in the wattage, we have some fancier names, PowerPod Pro. Uh, it's 90 watt combined again. Uh, this one looks a bit weird. Uh, it's got a shiny finish. All the other ones have a a matte white finish. But any in any case, uh, it's still Xyron branded. Uh, again, it has three ports on the back, uh, two USB-C and one USB-A. It does seem like this is in a different kind of, you know, generation or something, but, but this is a 90 watt charger. So this basically could charge your MacBook Pro. Uh, your 16 inch MacBook Pro, that's about, a, you know, 90 to 99 watt uh, machine. This could do it. Uh, it might not touch at full speed, but it should be good enough to, to keep it going uh, if you are using it actively. And finally, we have the largest charger that Xyron um, have. It is the Power Stone 120. So this one has a maximum output of 120 watts. Again, it's combined. So this one has four ports. Uh, a uh, USB, there's a C1, C2, C3, and then a USB-A. Again, the USB-A will obviously have less power than the uh, USB-C ports, but the combined output is 120. So this thing here could probably charge those gaming laptops that use 100 watts via USB-C. So if you have, I guess, the most powerful MacBook Pro, 16, whatever, 
Pro Max, uh, then this will handle it easily. Um, any other, you know, gaming laptops from, you know, ASUS or anything like that, or MSI, they will, you know, happily charge off this thing as well. Um, and if you have a lower power laptop, you can probably charge two or three of them at the same time, which is excellent. So comparing the size here, the 90 watt and the 120 watt, I would say is almost the same size. So if you are choosing between the 90 and the 120, then, you know, if you're thinking about size, um, by itself, I would say just go for the 120. It seems to be about the same size. It does feel a little bit heavier, but I think this weight, um, you know, more, you know, the, the power more than makes up for the, the weight uh, gain that you get. Uh, if you have a lower powered laptop, I think this 65 watt one is the one to go for. This will charge basically your low powered laptop, your phone, your tablet, and everything. But if you're just in the market for a phone charger because your phone doesn't come with a charger anymore, then the 30 watt is pretty good. It will handle your laptop, sorry, it will handle your tablet and also your, your phone, you know, with ease. All right, on this channel, we don't take their word for it, we test it. So to test these charges, I have a USB-C power meter. Uh, it's basically a voltmeter and an amp meter all in one, and it just checks the, uh, the voltage and the amp that's going through the cable. Next, we are also gonna use the supplied Xyron 100 watt USB-C cable. Uh, that they gave me for testing purposes. So this cable will make sure that we can get the full output from these chargers. Uh, the first charger we are going to test is the 65 watt charger here. Now on the back, there is some fine print. Uh, basically it says the max output is 30 watts. So from the USB-C port, you can get max 30 watts out of this. Uh, and if you use a USB-A port at the same time, the power is going to be split. Uh, we are going to charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, it's at about 40%, so it's under 50%, um, using the smallest charger first. Obviously, this is not going to fully power the MacBook, but we'll be able to see if we can get the max draw out of this small charger. Now, I've already done these tests offline, but this is what it looks like. After about a minute or two, the 30 watt charger has already reached its maximum, so it is able to deliver very, very close to its 30 watt uh, maximum there, so no issues with the 30 watt charger. Next, we have the 65 watt charger. Now this one has three USB ports, uh, USB, two USB-C, one USB-A. Again, on the bottom, there is some fine print. So this one says the maximum output is actually 65 watts from a single USB-C port. So we can actually get the full 65 watts out of this charger. Now, obviously, if you use the C and the A uh, or the C and the C, then the power gets split um, as shown here. So again, using the 16 inch MacBook Pro, again, it's still at 40 to 50%. Uh, we'll plug it in. Again, I've done this test offline already. So after about two or three minutes, this one is able to reach its maximum 65 watts out of that single USB-C port. So again, no problems there. This can reach its maximum output, no problems. And next we have our 90 watt charger. So this 90 watt charger is a little bit different. It has a ground. Uh, this is the only one that has ground, which is interesting. Um, and at the back, there's three USB, USB ports, two USB-C, one USB-A. Uh, and on the bottom, again, there is the fine print. So for this one, the single USB-C port is actually able to output 90 watts. So that's 20 volts at 4.5 amps there, so which becomes 90 watts if you multiply them. So we should be able to see 90 watts or very close 90 watts uh, coming out of this charger. So again, we're putting, putting this onto the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Again, it's still at 40 to 50%. Uh, after about four or five minutes, we see this charger start to level out uh, and it's hitting its maximum. So I was hoping to see closer to 90 or 80 watts here, but I'm getting about 70-ish. All right, so I've discovered why it doesn't hit the full 90 watts uh, or 100 watts. Uh, it's because the MacBook was asleep. So you just have to wake the MacBook uh, and then you see that it uh, starts to ramp up. So it's getting closer to 80 watts now uh, I think if you give it a few minutes, it's gonna hit that 90 watts. So you have 81 already, it's gonna be 82. Yep, and it's ramping up. Okay, now finally, we have the big boy, the 120 watt charger here. So again, my MacBook Pro is still on about 40 or 50%. Uh, and for this one, on the bottom here, uh, it says that the maximum output is 100 watts 
uh, out of the USB-C1 or C2 port. So obviously, again, if you use it with the other ports, so if you have multiple devices plugged in, it will split the power. But if you have one single device in the USB uh, C1 or C2 port, then you can get the full 100 watts out of it. So again, plugging it into the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And same thing here for the 120 watt charger here. Uh, it's getting pretty close to that maximum output. Uh, it's at 83, 84. Uh, I suspect that it's the MacBook that is not drawing the full power there. Uh, it's probably not under intense load at the moment. That's why it's only drawing 84 watts. But yeah, I have no doubt that this can reach this um, close to its maximum output. So all these chargers have been certified to Australian standards. Uh, they all have the Australian plug, so you can be certain that they're safe. Uh, also, the internals of this charger is made by a company called Navitas. Uh, and it's the same internals as chargers made by Hyperjuice and also chargers made by Anker. So you know that you're getting quality internals um, from these chargers as well. So yeah, I hope this is useful uh, and thanks for watching.